All right. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm Andrew. I'm at the University of Texas. And we've been using nanopore sequencing to sequence defective interfering RNAs. And so the phenomena that is defective genomes has actually been known for a long time. And essentially what a defective genome is, is a viral genome where large portions of the genome have been removed, either by genetic, genetic recombination or deletions. And these smaller truncated viral genomes can actually get passage alongside the wild type virus. And so because they're truncated, they don't actually encode or produce pr uh, productive variants of the proteins that are required for them. So they, get, they effectively parasitize the wild type viral infection. And because they have multiple virus particles going from cell to cell, they can parasitize it to the point where they actually attenuate or interfere with the wild type replication of the virus. And so these are very interesting because we can start to use these as antiviral therapies or as vaccines. And recently it's been emerging that these can actually, the, if there are defective genomes present in the inoculum that a patient is infected with, they might change the outcome of infection or change the uh, host immune response. However, we don't really know how these arise, so we know they arise via a combination, but the number of events that uh, are present in these genomes uh, are very complex. So to address this question, we've been working with this virus called Flockhouse virus. It's this very simple single-stranded RNA virus. has two genes. One's 3.1 kb, one's 1.4 kb, so a very small genome. And we can passage this serially in the lab in cell culture. So we, for, we passed this for a total of one month, which was nine passages of three days each. And we extracted the, and purified the viral particles in between each passage, and then sequenced with a combination of Illumina and Nanopore sequencing in between these passages. So for Illumina sequencing, we use our technique that we call ClickSeq. So very briefly, we, during our RT-PCR step, we spike in azidonucleotides into our PCR. And so this generates stochastically terminated cDNA fragments of an azido group at the three prime end. We use click chemistry to click ligates on a sequencing adapter, and then we can generate our Illumina libraries. Now, the advantage of this is because there's no fragmentation and there's no ligases, we're actually very robust against artifactual recombination. And so this gives us a very sensitive tool in which to detect the recombination events that are occurring in these viruses as we're passaging them. And so during the course of our passaging, what we found is with the Illumina, we could count the number of recombination events in each of our populations. And these do indeed increase over time, indicating the generation and evolution of these defective interfering RNAs. However, as you all know, the uh, main problem with the Illumina is they're so short that you can't correlate the frequency of these deletions on the same genome. So you can't get full-length genomes. So this is when we turn to nanopore sequencing in order to address this question. So we used um, a cDNA uh, amplicon approach to essentially get full-length reads of our genomes. And because the two RNAs are very short, we could get thousands of reads, giving us very good coverage in each of our uh, viral populations. And so, for example, in our very early passages, this is just RNA2, it's a it's the short gene, we can get full-length sequences, but in our later passages, you can see that there are these large deletions of several hundred nucleotides in the middle of the genome. And what you might notice from this alignment here is that these deletions are often correlated with one another. So in each, in our passage, each of our passages for each of our viral ge uh, uh, genomic RNAs, we could count the number of deletions in each uh, single read, which corresponds to uh, a unique genome. And what we found is that almost all of them had two or more deletions. So very few only had one deletion. So this implies that there aren't any intermediates that are being generated during the formation of this DI RNAs. We're going straight from a wild type virus and uh, generating what we call mature defective RNAs very quickly. But we can go into more detail, So we can because we can characterize the specific nucleotide sequence of each of these deletions, we can actually uh, uh, sort of car car categorize every single unique genome. So here in this uh, stacked area plot, the green would be wild type virus, and each of these different shades is a different specific unique genome with a different combination of deletions in them. And the orange is two deletions, the blue is one deletion. And so this gives us a very you know, fine tool to look at the diversity of these defective RNAs as they're a passaging over time. And so the main point I want to uh, bring out here is just how much diversity there is. And if you had sequenced this with Illumina sequencing, you might find one or two point mutations, but it's only when you think about the uh, defective interfering RNAs that you're really capturing the full diversity that's in your viral genome. And so this gives us very important information about how DI RNAs evolve and how they mature. And really we're hoping to take this into the clinic and see if we can characterize ca uh, ca ca characterize these defective interfering RNAs in actual patient samples. And so this work was done by Elizabeth Jaworski, who's uh, here, and she'll be presenting a post with me later today. If you have any questions, please get in touch. And thank you very much.